Hello appraisers, this is Brandon again with Choice Valuation and today I'm making this video to announce our official launch of the brand new giant update to Spark. So for those of you who aren't aware, Spark is a data importing tool and we essentially completely rewrote the software to add a whole bunch of functionality, make it easier to use. We've built in tutorials and we also, and most importantly, integrated with public records. So now with Spark, you have the benefit of not only MLS information, but public records as well. So essentially what Spark is, it's a website you go to. When you first go to it, this is what you're going to see. And uh, you can get started with it by going to the Alamode Total Store and signing up for the free trial. So you can use it 12 times without uh, paying for it just to make sure that you like it. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do is run through this twice. Once to show you how quick and easy it is to use, then again to uh, show you all the functionality and features and customization options we've added. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to click the start button here and we'll get started. Ready, set, go. Okay, so first thing you do is you choose your state and your MLS and then you choose whether it's a UAD or non and what form you're going to use. And then last, you pick your effective date. Now here is where you upload your file from MLS that has all your comps in it. I'm going to choose that one. It's going to grab all that information from public records. Now I'm going to load in the subject information by typing it in, because I don't have a file for that because it wasn't listed in MLS. And let's do this one. You can choose to do it by address or by parcel ID. We have that information. All you do is you hit next, and here's your grid. Then you click export up in the top right. Now it's creating a file. and it's going to ask me to save it. Now your browser may ask you, uh, may not ask you anything. It may just automatically save it to your downloads folder. Uh, that just depends on the settings you have with your internet browser. I'm going to go ahead and create a new report. I can also uh, merge it into a currently open report, but just to kind of show you everything that it puts into your report, we're going to do it this way. And here's that report that it's building. And it looks like we are done. Okay, so I'm going to stop that. That was 57 seconds, uh, just under a minute to load in 14 comps and a subject property. Now let's go ahead and look at what it put into our report. I'm going to click on forms. Now you can see the information up here, uh, the listing information, or I'm sorry, the listing history. And what else do we get here? The lot size, you got your FEMA map information, uh, a bunch of the improvement information based on both MLS and public record data. And then if we scroll down, of course, you got your grid, all the comps that we loaded in, the prior transfer history, uh, and it checks these boxes appropriately here. And you'll notice that there's no prior transfer history comments in here, and that's because with Spark you have the option of either loading those into this comment field or loading all the prior transfer history all into one text addendum. And by default, that's what it's going to do, and that's what I have it set for on my account. So that's what we've done, and I'll show you that here in just a second. So you can see it does fill out quite a bit of your grid, and there is a lot of customizability in this, which I'll show you later. Uh, let's scroll on down. Let's go into comps 4, 5, and 6, 7, 8, 9, on through and then to comp 14. And now here is that supplemental text addendum. You can see it loads in your subject property, 36 month history, and that's also customizable. So you can make that be however many number of months back you want. And then the comparable 12 month prior transfer history, of course, that's also customizable. You can see it loaded all that in. It gives you uh, the date of the transfer, the price, the buyer and seller, the type of deed, and the document number. You can see uh, for this one, for example, there were three prior transfers just in the past 12 months, so quite a bit of time that would be saving you and typing hassle uh, by using Spark in doing that. Okay, so also, of course, it's going to load in the associated photo addenda if they're not already in your report. And then the last thing I wanted to show you as far as what it puts into your report is I'm going to click on Work File and show you this. So what it does is it creates a property report, and that's this PDF right here. So I'm going to double-click on that and show it to you. It's right here. So I'm going to open that up, zoom out a little bit. So the first page of this property report, uh, which goes into your digital work file, as I said, is a summary of all the properties that were loaded in. It also has all the listing numbers separated by commas and all the parcel numbers separated by commas. That is actually a feature several appraisers asked us for uh, because it's easy to kind of just click that, highlight those, and then copy and paste them right into your MLS system to quickly pull up those listings again if you want to can maybe look at the photos while you're finishing or verifying the information in your grid. Uh, I'll zoom out again. So this is the second page. You get your summary location map. It shows you all the properties you loaded and your subject. And then this third page is where uh, the real information, information kind of begins. So this is the subject property. 
it loads in all the information it can. Now keep in mind we did not load in an MLS file for the subject property. I typed it in manually. Uh, so all it has is the public record information on this property. It does not have the actual MLS data, which is why you see these being blank right here. You can see all the information it does have from public records here, and of course all this. And then, uh, of course, it also has the entire uh, prior transfer history for that property and the mortgage finance history. If I scroll on down, I'm going to show you that we also have two maps for each property. So the first one is zoomed in and it shows you the parcel boundaries and the building footprint. And then the second one is zoomed out more to kind of give you a better idea of the surrounding area and it also has the satellite imagery in there. Now I also wanted to point out that we did have it uh, so that Google is highlighting in bright yellow all primary traffic arteries. So you can quickly scroll through this report and see uh, which properties are proximate to uh, primary traffic arteries. Okay, so if I go on down, of course, right here, you've got the uh, uh, first comparable that we put in. You got the information. Now you can see this one has quite a bit more information because this one I did load in an MLS file with, for those 14 comps. So we have a lot more information on this page than we did for the subject. And uh, so you can see we've got uh, the MLS subdivision name and the public record subdivision name and the number of bathrooms from MLS right next to the number of bathrooms from public records. So it's kind of cool. You have all on one page, all of your MLS and public record information side by side. And not only that, but we flag it in red if there's a discrepancy. So you can quickly look and see, oh, uh, MLS shows one fireplace, public records shows none. Just to kind of flag that in your mind so you know to maybe go back and verify that later. Same with basically everything where we have MLS and public records. It'll always flag it in red. Also put a couple asterisks to it in case you're printing it out and it's in black and white. And then of course the maps. So it goes like that all the way throughout 14 comps. You've got all your properties and you've got the associated maps. And I think that covers it for the report part of this. So let's go ahead and take a step back and look back at Spark. So I'm going to put that screen back up here and show you some of the customization options you have in here and the other features. So uh, the first thing you'll notice is we have these red fields and this lines up with that property report we were just talking about where it flags things red there where there's a discrepancy between MLS and public records. That's the same thing here. So if I hover over this 1900, it's going to show me that MLS is 1900. Public records shows 1646. I can choose either one of those if I want to or just leave it alone or I can switch all the comps to uh, public records if I wanted to. And now also what I can do is I can click right over here on the above grade GLA uh, line or the text I should say and right, yet, right here you can see my preference is MLS for when it comes to above grade GLA but I can just change that over to public records and what that means is it's going to load all that information in based on public records and going into the future until I change this setting again it'll always use public records if that's what I prefer and then also you have the uh, MLS public record comparison and uh, let me show you how that works so I'm going to go back and you can see, for example, the patio lines here. There's some discrepancy on the patio lines. Now, let's say in your area, patios are always wrong when it comes to public records. So you don't even want those to be flagged as red. You don't care what public records has to say when it comes to patios. So you can just turn that off by clicking over here on the porch patio deck text. And you choose for MLS public record comparison. Just choose no. Hit save changes and take me back. And now those are no longer red. It's uh, that simple, and that applies to every line over here. Excuse me. That applies to every line over here uh, that has both MLS and public records information flowing into it. Now you can also see that there's a price that's red. Now the price, the date, and the document number are all tied together under the sale. So what we did is we put all that information on, at, on the header, and that's where you can select your sale. So right now I can click on Comp Five, and you can see that it's showing that this is the sale that's selected that's going into my report. This is the sale from MLS. Of course, MLS doesn't have the document number or the buyer and seller, so that information's blank. But uh, this is the MLS sale. This is the sale that Spark chose as the corresponding sale in public records. Now let's say uh, I don't like that and I want to, for some crazy reason, use this sale from 1997. All I do is click it and now that's the sale that's going into the report. You can see the information updated here. Not only the price, document number, whoops, sorry about that. Not only the price, document number, and date, but also the prior transfer history. So uh, that's this bottom line. So I click this magnifying glass. That shows me the prior transfer history for Comp 5. 
you can see this is the current sale and here's the prior transfer history. Now there's nothing going into the report because there's nothing that happened within 12 months uh, but it would have updated if there was a reason to. I can click done and then right here you see we have the options. So it's 36 months back for the subject and 12 months back for the comps regarding the prior transfer history. And now that's all defined right here. So I can click prior transfer history. I can enter in those settings however I want to, uh, the 36 and the 12. But you see I also have alternate settings, which are set at 60 months and 60 months for the subject and comps. And I'm going to show you why. So all you have to do is click here and switch over to your alternate settings. So now, for example, I can look at comp 1 settings and uh, you can see the prior transfer history is now loading in all these transfers going back five years uh, because that's my setting right here. Now this is handy if you have a particular client. Let's say you have one client who always want things done, wants things done differently and they want you to go back five years for both your subject and your comps. Then you just put those settings into here and then whenever you're doing one of those reports you just click the button and it'll switch over to that and load all that information automatically into your report. Okay, now a couple basic things. You have some options uh, like comp placement. So I can just click this, drag it to a different location. Uh, I can also scroll down here and my listings down here, I can put these into the REO listings tab. And what that's going to do is load those properties into the REO addenda. If it's not already in my report, it's going to create the addenda in the report and then load the properties into it. Now I can click on the REO listings to see them and I'm just going to go ahead and move them back to the sales grid because that's where I want them. Now you see we have these plus buttons as well and that's because Spark allows you to load up to 30 comps per tab. So right now we have 14 comps here on the sales grid. If I want to load more I just click that button and I can choose to either type them in to get the public records information or if I have the MLS information because it's a listing or it's been listed then I can just click upload and upload that file just like I did at the beginning of this video. Uh, if it's like a FISBO, for example, hasn't been listed, you just click here, type in the property information, and it's going to go and grab that from uh, public records. Okay, uh, so that covers that section of it. I uh, mentioned to you that over here, any of these items that are in blue, you can click on those to customize the way that information is going to go into your report. And that includes virtually everything. So uh, if I don't like the way uh, this is abbreviated, I like forced air to be abbreviated in a different way. I just click on heating and cooling. I change that to what I prefer, hit save changes and take me back, and then it updates the grid on the fly. And uh, you can kind of see where we're going. I'm not going to go through all of these, uh, but you also have these general settings over here. So you click the gear icon, click general settings, and you can see that we've got these here. A lot of different options. Some of these will, to, will increase your uh, workflow speed as well. So you saw at the beginning of the video I had to choose my state and then my MLS, but if I always work in the same estate and same MLS, I just choose those defaults and then hit save changes and take me back and now I don't ever have to answer those questions anymore when I start up Spark. Uh, okay, so I think that covers everything. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching and taking the time to watch. Uh, again, go to the Total Store, take advantage of the free trial, check it out, and down below you're going to see our contact information. So give me a call or shoot me an email with any questions you have. And by all means, after you use it, send us some feedback. We rely on your guys' feedback to uh, make this thing better. So thanks a lot.